Okay. My name is James Williams Jr. And this is Kung Fu Habit number two. So if you watched my last video, it was about uh, making a video about people who were phonies, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to call out this video and I support Chop Crown. Mm. Tastes great. Wish I had some more. Anyway. Yeah, keeping it real. I eat crumbs. It's my bed. Only person that sits on this motherfucker is me. So, everybody in their family have motherfuckers who swear they're hard as nails or Billy badasses. And a lot of motherfuckers in my family think that that's me. Alright, first, nothing could be further from the truth. I have never walked around saying that. I was Billy Badass. I have taken martial arts. I have been to the army. And if you want to say I'm a Billy Badass, hey, knock yourself out. Shit won't come out of my mouth. But I will say this. I am not bad. But the bad don't fuck with me. Because they know like I know. I'm going out. But you're going with me. It's just that simple. So I'm making this video for the simple fact that a lot of people in my family claim to be badasses. They really do. But it's funny how quickly a badass ain't a badass when bullets are flying. A badass ain't a badass when it comes to people on the streets. But they're a badass when it comes to fighting fuckers in their own family. I'm sure you guys probably have people like this. I know it's got to be more than just a black thing. But for the most part, a lot of the badasses in my family are only badasses. Because they, um, they're so bad when it comes to, like, like me or somebody like that. But they can't, um, be this badass persona that they have. Why is this thing not working? When it comes down to these assholes in the street. They aren't as bad as they pretend to be. I'm sure you guys have someone in your family that's the same way. Okay, well, fuck it. I can't remember the damn password. I'll figure it out another day. Anyway, so, you know, if, if you're a badass, you know, I'm going to speak from experience, you know, I don't fought in the streets. I'm not proud of it. But I never started those fights. Ever. The only fights I've ever started has been with my big sister. And she has constantly whooped my ass until I was 15 years old. But prior to that, when I lived in the projects, I never started the fights. When I moved over here to Rougemont, I never started the fights. But I've always been victorious and I've always won them. Because I have no choice. My skills will take care of me, all right? And for those who are thinking, oh, James, you're just showing off. You're just talking a bunch of shit on YouTube. Okay, you're the ones that are talking the shit. You're the ones that say all the shit in front of everybody so that people will assume that you are bad and you are dangerous. Well, here's the thing. If you're bad and dangerous, why are you in this hick-ass town being bullying people who are your family, but you're not out being badasses to the niggas in the street? See, a badass, you can't be a part-time badass. Either you're all in or you're not. I'm not a badass. And every now and again, I don't have a problem giving somebody the tip of my boot. But here's the thing. I don't go around preaching shit. I don't go around hollering, yeah, I'm the baddest motherfucker in the family. I'm the next Bruce Lee. You don't hear none of that shit come out of my mouth. I don't go around threatening motherfuckers until it is necessary. And if I tell you I'm going to do something... Ain't no fucking bones about it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it when you don't give me an option to walk away. When you don't give me an option to do nothing else but put you in the damn dirt. And here's the thing. I'm going to take you back in time real quick. I had a cousin. His life was taken. Him and I didn't have lots of problems before he moved to New York. It's when he came back that we started having problems. Him and his little goon squad, they all know who they are. I got respect for them now. But when this shit first happened, nah, that shit won't like that. These motherfuckers supposed to be family. Yet, they coming in on me. Oh, 
Let me explain. See, I've never been a thug. I've never been a badass. I've always been that guy that's tried to be good. I've always been that guy who, once I started working, I would keep looking for jobs. I'm not going to be like the rest of black society. Oh, I'm going to go and learn to drink beer and smoke weed. Now, I'd have had my share of alcohol. Weed ain't never touched these lips. I don't need no weed to feel like a motherfucking man. I also need to go around picking on family members to feel like a fucking man. I know my motherfucking role, and I play it very well. Alright? Am I a badass? You be the judge. You'll never hear me say I'm a badass, but I will tell you people have said that I have been a bad motherfucker once or twice. And that's cool. If they want to believe that, it's fine. It's not my place to condemn, judge, or disagree. I don't have to agree. But I will tell you this. Most of the people that I have fought have never come back for a second round. That includes the guy that these guys went to go get. My family members who could pick on me, but not go out there and pick on the badasses from the streets. Y'all all know who you are and you all know this shit is true. My cousin lost his life. Nothing changed. But so much as to draw a gun on me and a firecracker, yet where was all that shit when our cousin was dying? I was at work because I was working two jobs and attending college, but everybody decides that, oh, we're going to pick on James because he's smaller than us, because he's a kung fu. Funny how bad motherfuckers are always bad when they're together or when they have a group of people or when they have the one thing that makes them lethal. It's called a handgun. See, a real bad motherfucker don't need no goddamn weapons. I don't carry guns. I have a knife. It's in the car. It's a little itty bitty thing. I have a couple of knives in this room because this is my domain. You enter here without my permission, I don't have to be a bad motherfucker. That's when the soldier in me comes out and I can put an arrow through your chest or I can put a knife through your throat. Because let's be honest, this is my domain. And in this room, Christians forgive me, but in this room, I'm God. I decide your fate. Out in the street, if we gotta go hands up, again, I'm gonna be God. Because I'm not looking for trouble. But if you bring in the trouble to me, I'm not going to be held responsible for what the fuck I have to do to make sure that you don't fucking kill me. Alright? The army doesn't make people less dangerous. The army pe makes people more dangerous. I was dangerous before I joined the army. The army made me lethal. It also gave me the mentality to know that I only have one mission. And that is survive. Period. Now, as a martial artist, and I've said this before, this shit even happened. You know, everything I touch is my weapon. Bad motherfucker or not, there's nothing I can't kill you with except for maybe a blade of grass. Now, there's a Chinese legend about a, a warrior who fought somebody with a blade of grass and he won. I don't know the name of the motherfucker. I just know I heard it while learning martial arts from someone. If it's true, good for that person. If it's not true, then somebody taught me a bald faced to lie, but every myth and legend has some truth to it. And then they made a, a, clip, a, a clip of something like that on Dragon Ball Z where Goku fought Trunks with his two fingers and Trunks had a sword and Goku fucked him up with the sword. Yeah, well, the two fingers versus the sword and Goku still won the little duel. It wasn't even really a duel, it was just like them playing around. But in the same breath, that came from that legend of whatever warrior in China, Japan, or Korea, or wherever the fuck he was at, it was an Asian thing, where he beat a man with a blade of grass. Right? You gotta be damn good to beat somebody with a motherfucking blade of grass, especially if these motherfuckers had swords, according to the legend that I was told. Like I said, it's a legend. Legends have myths all have a tiny bit of truth to it. I don't give a damn how good you are. If I see a man beat somebody else's ass with one blade of grass, I'm not fucking with him. Simple as that. I am not fucking with him. I'm not that damn good. You understand? But those are the things that legends are made of. I would much rather be a legend than a hero. But hey, that shit ain't gonna happen. 
and by the time it does happen, I'll be dead, and that'll be about the only time any of you will remember me. Moving on. So, when you have members in your family who are constantly trying to be badasses, like full-time badasses, something I've never been, something I've never claimed to be, but I'll tell you like this. The more you talk, the less you fight. You want to fight? Swing. It's just that simple. Swing. Shut that bullshit up and swing. You know, I would say at least give me or whoever you want to fight a fighting chance to let us know you're gonna fucking fight us. Don't try to mean mug us from the back because that's the actions of a fucking coward. You know, and when I was younger, before I really knew how good I was with martial arts, I'll be the first to tell you, yeah, I was a coward. I never mean mugged anybody from the back. But I have been known to knock on somebody's door and drop them in the doorway and then run like hell out of fear that they would whoop my ass. Yes, I'm guilty of that. But once I learned that I actually had skills behind the training, I no longer did dumb shit. I no longer was afraid of what I couldn't do because I learned what I could do. Once I knew what I could do, I started perfecting it. Block, block, strike, block, strike. You know, my hand game had to get fast because my leg game was a lot better than my hand game. So again, I tell people all the time, it's like, James, you ain't shit, you ain't shit. I say, okay, well, you believe what you want. If you're dumb enough to test that theory, that's going to be on you. I've been fighting since I was six years old, which means I've been fighting before most of you were born, before most of you were out of diapers, specifically family members, because my uncles on my mother's side made me fight neighborhood kids. My Uncle Sam, my Uncle Joe, David on leave, my Uncle Doc while he was alive. The only uncle that never made me fight anybody was my Uncle Wendell. Now on my dad's side, psh, my Uncle Bruce never made me do nothing. My Uncle Robert Henry was always in the military. He never made me do nothing outside of be his surrogate son. I just met my Uncle Bryson when my Uncle Bruce died, so we he never got to know me as a child. You know what I'm saying? And my father, my father would not let me fight. There's a story behind that. <laughs> so I was in Smithfield once. I love my dad. But this story, I did not love my dad this day. Not that I didn't love him like a father loves a son. But I don't know if he was saving me from me or if he was saving me from an ass whooping. Could have been both ways. I don't know. This kid that, um, was our next door neighbor. And Mike Tyson was big at the time. And this guy was bigger than me. And he, he just wanted to whoop my ass so bad. And I got to the point where I said, all right, well, fuck it. If I don't fight him, he's going to keep fucking with me until I do. His name was Corey. How you doing, buddy? I haven't forgotten you. I wanted to kill you that day. In case you're watching. So we put on these boxing gloves. I'm not a sports fan. So Corey. Light skinned motherfucker like me. Way bigger than me. And he goes. I'm Mike Tyson. Now I only agreed to fight him. If we were going to pull punches. Okay. And here's why I said that. Because the only way he would fight me. Is if I didn't use karate. And if I didn't kick him. Right? I'm a man of my word. I'm a man of honor. Corey was not. So we fight. This motherfucker, we got on boxing gloves, so it's not like we won't really try to fight. I won't really try to box this motherfucker. You know, because I don't know shit about boxing. I learned that day. Because I got boxing skills real quick that day. Because I got mad and I get retarded strength when I'm mad, right? So we box, and I'm going to tell you, to be honest, if we were going by rounds or points, psh, my ass would have lost that shit completely. So he he's not pulling his punches. I'm pulling my, I'm not trying to hit this boy with everything I got. He, on the other hand, he's bigger than me. He claimed at the time that he was not trying to hit me with everything he got. Now I can smell a fucking rat and a liar a mile a fucking way when you in a fucking fight. If a motherfucker's bigger than you and he's pulling his punches, you gonna know. Alright? I don't give a fuck. Even if he heavy-handed, 
you gonna fucking know. If a motherfucker's bigger than you and he ain't pulling his punches, oh, you gonna fucking know. So this motherfucker's tagging me. He's like, boom, boom, boom. And I can, I can block one, but I can't block the other. You know, which means I usually only block the second one. So left, boom, I'm hit. Right, nope, block that shit. So, you know, I know how to block. Martial arts, I know how to block. You know, that's not the issue. The problem was, I've been taught to fight with combos. Right, left, kick. You know, because my first teacher taught me to fight the streets. He didn't teach me to fight in a dojo. He taught me to fight in the streets. Wherever you are, thank you. So, we box. And we got our gloves tied up. And I mean, his gloves not loaded. He's heavy handed. He's whooping my ass. Point blank period. He is whooping my ass. Not to the point where I'm going down or I'm going to sleep. Because I can take a beating. I've been taking a beating all my fucking life. So I know that I can take him. All I gotta do is pull a Rocky. When he get tired, fuck him up. Because a lot of people can't take a beating. They can give it, but they can't take it. And see, the people who can't take beatings, they know they can't take a beating. Or at least they don't know that they can't take a beating. The people who can take a beating, we tough. And I don't give a fuck what anybody tells you body-wise. It's better to be tougher than stronger. Because if you can outlast, if you can take a beating, you can give a better one. All you got to do is last. And that's what I was taught. So, I mean, he's hitting me. By the time we get to the third round, now I'm pissed. I got maybe four hits in doing the whole goddamn confrontation. He was whooping my ass. It won't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The motherfucker had boxing skills. Period. Which, had I not had them gloves on, his ass would have been mine. Had I been allowed to street fight or throw kicks, his ass would have been mine. So now, we about to hit the fifth round. He a little tired, but he's still stronger than me. He still got it going up, you know. He ain't as tired as he look. He just trying to, to goat me in. Because he know I ain't tired. I've been taking these hits in the face. I've been eating that shit like it was loads of bread. Ain't nothing. You know? And he's starting to hit me harder every round. And I keep telling him, dude, you need to pull them punches, man. Like, I'm pulling my punches. I'm pulling them. He's lying in my face. You need to pull them punches, man. I'm pulling them. Boom. And every damn time. This one was hard. This one was harder. Every fucking time. And then I reached, fuck it. Now remember, I just said, I did not love my dad that day. My dad's never whooped my ass. I never gave him a reason to. That day was the day that he was about to whoop my ass. Because Corey hit me maybe. By the time we got the fifth round, all of his hits, probably in all, he probably nailed me above 90 fucking times. And like I said, he whooped my ass. I ain't gonna lie about it. I ain't ashamed to say it. He was whooping my ass. We was boxing. I ain't a boxer. I'm a kung fu fighter. No shit about boxing. I know now. I picked up some shit along the way. That's what makes street fighters more dangerous than anyone else on the planet. We we learn, we adapt, and we get better than most of you. So he's tearing my ass up. And when I have heached the fuck it, I don't know if I had more sweat on my hands or whatever the hell it was. But he hit me. And he's like, he hit me like with a, a badass three piece. This was like, pip, pip. He went for that uppercut, and I did like this. I said, uh-uh. I threw my hands down, and the glove shot off. I said, you're fucking dead. You're not pulling those punches, and now I'm going to start using my motherfucking feet. So he's like, no, 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 no. Let me get my glove. I said, nah, you wouldn't stop hitting me. Now I'm going to start kicking you. Here comes my dad. He doesn't leave. He's under the car, and he hollers my name. And my dad won't type motherfucker. It calls you twice. So he goes, Jimmy, you better get your ass around here right now. And I looked at Corey and I said, he just saved your fucking life. Corey ain't say nothing. My friend Lloyd ain't say nothing. All the girls that were watching were pretty much laughing at me because my ass got kicked. Now, my nose wasn't bleeding anything. He couldn't bust me open. He was trying to bust me open, but he couldn't. Because like I said, I've been taking beating since I was six goddamn years old. Taking an ass whooping ain't nothing for me. No, I'm one of the toughest motherfuckers that I know. My friends will tell you the same. I'm that never say die multicultural guy. I will not stay down for shit. So, I go back around there and I'm mad as hell. And my dad, he's like, what the fuck's your problem? I said, motherfucker's cheating. 
You volunteered to go into the fight, right? Yep. You said that you weren't going to do no kicks, right? Yep. He said, well, then you got what you asked for because your dumb ass decided that you was going to fight that motherfucker on his terms. You know you don't know how to box. You know all you know was kicks. Why would you fight on his terms? I ain't think about that shit at the time. I just got tired of the motherfucker picking on me. And I told my dad, well, I got tired of him picking on me. I figured if I fight him, he'll leave me the fuck alone. He said, he might leave you alone. Or now you might give him a reason to fuck with you more. Well, the opposite happened. He ain't fuck with me no more. Because he knew right after that, that after I got to the point where I said, fuck it. He was hitting me so bad with everything he had. I won't really feel no more pain after the first fucking round because my adrenaline was pumping so bad. And like I said, I've been so used to getting my ass kicked by my big sister that getting punched in the face won't shit no more. I stopped feeling pain because I started feeling so much rage that this motherfucker had to go. So, first, thank you, Corey, for making me know that I have no limits when it comes to taking a beating. Secondly, thank you, Corey, for teaching me that lesson of fighting off more than you can chew. I'm not a boxer. I wasn't a boxer at the time. I'm not a boxer now. I have always and will forever be a fucking street fighter. You motherfuckers that call it MMA, you call it whatever the fuck you want. MMA even has rules. I learned that the hard way from a friend who has a friend who told me that my plan to not get body slammed is illegal. I said, well, then I'll just be disbarred from the MMA universe because when someone is coming to tackle me, they're getting knees into the sternum and elbows in the spine. It's a fight. You fight to survive. You don't fight for victory. You fight to survive. Anybody who teaches you otherwise is lying to you. So in the end of that, my dad jumped down my ass a little bit about it. I was mad as hell. But it was even worse than my dad made me go apologize. I wasn't even in the wrong. He made me go and apologize. So I told Corey I was sorry for losing my cool. Then I got grounded for like maybe a day or two. I forgot what the hell I had to do. But right after that, I went right back to training martial arts styles, and I said, if I ever had to fight this motherfucker in the street, his ass is mine. We never had that conflict. I went away for the end of the summer. When I, when I left, they were there. When I came back the next summer, they were gone. They moved. So I don't know what happened to him or his sisters or any of the other. They were good people, you know. But I don't know if I taught him a lesson, but he taught me one. And that lesson was really simple. You know, don't ever fight another man's fight. Make the motherfuckers fight yours. The motherfucker don't know karate and he's starting shit. That's his problem. Not yours. He wants to fight. He wants to put stipulation. No, 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 no. See, here's the thing. You want to fight. If you ain't good with your hands and your feet and you only good with your hands, well, then you better get good with your fucking hands. I won't go with my hands. Corey knew that. I knew that. That's why we went five rounds with him being the victor of that shit. Now, had we had fought my fight, where pretty much anything goes, it would have turned out a whole different ball game. We wouldn't have went more than one round. Because I was going to try to kill that motherfucker. He was bigger than me. He was stronger than me. There was only one mission. Seek and destroy. That's it. Because that's what I was taught. Years later, I started taking Taekwondo with my late master in Sifu, Master Jim Ennis, who would later commit Harikari. Mr. Ennis taught me mental discipline. I, I will make another video about that because I'm at the 20 minute mark. Oh, I'm at the 25 minute mark, sorry. So the next video will be the last video. Thank you.